Hey, this is The Real Ron S, and you're watching our YouTube channel, and I'm here joined by the incredibly talented DJ Joshua Carl. How are you doing today? I am well. Oh, wait. I almost forgot. I wasn't going to let you be the only one with shine today. There we go. Oh, those are cool. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it was, I could do only the minimalist amount to even touch your glasses collection. So the only thing with these is I can't see. So... Well, then take them off. You want to see your eyes. Your eyes are very expressive. But thank you for the compliment. I really appreciate it. And I of course, also man. want to thank you for serving our country. Just dive in with oh, that. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. Um, um, you were a combat medic in the Iraqi war. Uh, yeah, I was in um, Baghdad and Mosul and Tikrit and al-Assad between 06, 07, serving as a combat medic to um, the 101st Airborne as well as 3rd ID as well as Marine air wing, second air wing, including um, their recon guys. So yeah, it was pretty, pretty interesting. Wow. Have you ever needed to use your combat medic skills and event while you were DJing? Not at the events, but there's been at least a half a dozen uh, times where I've had to stop on the side of the highway and the ride home from car accidents where I've had to, you know, kind of pull, couple people from cars and or, or at least check on people i keep an aid bag in the back of my car and it's gone a little out of date like i'm not going to start any ivs most of the ivs i ever started were usually on myself um after drinking the night before or not feeling good um that's what you learn in medic school is how to give yourself an iv so you can party hard the night before and bounce back the next day so um luckily never at an event almost once two years ago um you know, the floors get slick and everything. And um, this girl, there was like a, a dance battle circle and this girl went extra hard and like hyperextended and shattered her knee. And I heard the entire crowd kind of like wail. And I was just kind of like, oh, somebody must have did something. And I looked and there was just a girl clutching her like flopping knee on the dance floor. And of course, we turned on the lights and, you know, the medics and the real medics and the and the firemen and everybody came and carried her out. Now, as sad as that was, I was kind of like, well, you really can't get much more like, you know, you're murdering the dance floor when people are injuring themselves. So I kind of took it as one of those like that girl was going hard. Maybe I should have taken it down a lot notch and played some R&B. She wouldn't have hurt herself. <laughs> You can't blame yourself for being a good DJ. Uh, well, I want to go back to March. I'm thinking that you were fully booked with club and private events. So what was your initial reaction to COVID? Um, I think it was just like everybody else's. It was just, you know, we, we weren't really sure. Um, it happened right around St. Patrick's Day. So, well, it, just before St. Patrick's Day. So some of the places were like, hey, we're going to dial it back or we might not open next week. And then it came down from the government like, oh, we're not even having St. Patrick's Day. And in Boston, I mean, that's like telling New Orleans no Mardi Gras, you know. So uh, the parades, the the three days of bars being open 8 a.m. to 2 a.m. and drinking all day, that whole um realm of income for for these venues was a big deal and they were like hey we we might not open so um i'm the entertainment director and resident dj at five different venues so i only dj i don't have a day job i don't kind of weekend warrior it and um ironically um so my venue slowly started you know falling to the wayside like hey you know they're saying that we can't open but you know, we can open with 50% capacity. And this is like early March, mid-March. And um, finally, they just, as I'm sure you remember, they were just like, everything's done. So all my venues, all my events, um, actually my events were still postponing. They're like, hey, we hear in July that we might get reopened, phase three, you know. And then, you know, June came and they're like, we're hearing August, so we're going to push this wedding back to August. And then obviously August, they're like, you know what? We're going to look at March of next year. And I'm like, that's probably the safest bet. So, but yeah, the, uh, thank God for the, you know, like the stimulus and, and the unemployment rolling um, us gig workers into unemployment was huge. I didn't, I honestly didn't think they'd do it um, because the, we don't have like a union or a voice as DJs or even Bartenders have a little bit of a voice. They have like their little pockets of representation, but there's nobody like in the DJ community, like representing us at like town hall meetings or 
like uh, two government officials. And I, I mean, I've been saying for over a decade, there should be, there should be some sort of governing body that makes sure DJs are trying to get health insurance that when they get older, they're starting to think about, you know, putting money away or even life insurance and things like that. Um, when you're 20 years old, whatever, you know, go nuts, have fun. That's what DJing is all about. But once you make it a career and you're like, okay, I have a family, I have to provide X, X, Y, Z income every year for my family. I have to stay healthy. Um, if this ever happens again, I mean, the government can't keep throwing money at us. So I know that some DJs got help through music cares, but a union or organization for just education for DJs would be a great thing to do. Um, so going back to the first response to COVID, um, were you streaming before COVID? So I had a Twitch account. I'm, if you do, if you notice my YouTube page actually goes back to 2006 wow. is when I launched my YouTube page. So uh, I'm always interested in what's next. Um, definitely one of those people, um, I'll preface this with, I don't, always update my operating systems i've learned the hard way but everything else i'm always like oh i want to see what this does i want to see what this does i watch i'm constantly watching youtube about you know the guys that i value their opinions and what's coming down the pipe and what it's gonna you know how it applies to you know the entertainment and tech industry um and then my job for myself and like you know because i i what's the word I'm looking for? The guys that I book in my venues, I, I look out for them. So like if something's coming down the pipe from mixed emergency, I want to be able to grab my guys and be like, Hey, check this out. You need to start implementing this. Like great example is jam text. When jam text started to pop, I, I built a relationship with them and all my guys started using jam text and every single owner of every venue we put it in absolutely loved it. So like the, it's a matter of like keeping your eyes, your feelers out there to see like, oh, this is coming. This is coming. So like I said, YouTube, I, I felt like this is going to be big back in 2006. I had a couple really big videos on there. Surprisingly, every once in a while I go back and I have like 100,000 views or something or on a couple videos. Uh, for a while, my best most watched video was a screen grab of a watering willy commercial that I thought was hilarious. For whatever reason, that got thousands and thousands of views, and I never got copyright stricken. But then again, I shoot a video in the nightclub, and they're like, the background music gets me copyright stricken. So, yeah. Um, but Twitch, I got I got an account quite a while ago. I wasn't really streaming. It was more to watch and interact with some of the gamers that I liked. Um, my kids are into games quite a bit, uh, especially my son. He plays Fortnite and stuff, and he's, he's actually streamed uh, a little bit himself. We talked about maybe doing a father-son co-stream when we play games and stuff like that. Trying to get him into DJing, it hasn't hit him yet. My daughter is actually musically talented. Like, I'm fake musically talented. I play other people's music. <laughs> I might do it well, but I'm still just editing other people's creations. She plays cello, violin. She's in a choir. You know, she she actually has musical talent. So um, I just let her walk her path. <laughs> Do you know, have you ever heard of DJ Riddler? Oh, of course. Yes. He does streams with his son playing games and him DJing and our renders DJing also. So. Oh, nice. You could Here that. I thought I had original idea. I know <laughs> Cleveland Terry also does something similar. I think he, he goes back and forth with his son in the same room. Um, but he plays Fortnite and I'm not a big Fortnite guy. So we were like, you know what? I'll play Fortnite if you play Call of Duty. And then I was like, if you stop listening to trash hip hop from TikTok... <laughs> I'll let you start. I'll let you come and start DJing on my page. <laughs> so, how different is it between streaming gigs and live gigs? Oh uh, man, that was probably the biggest. Like, if you go back and watch, well, they're deleted now because Twitch, as you know, you don't want to leave vods up that have muted muted audio. But I'm constantly saying in those videos, it's really weird DJing for nobody, like because I'm a very finger on the pulse kind of DJ. Like I'm constantly watching my crowd. I'm looking for reactions to songs. Like when I know I'm bringing a track in, I want to see if people like have a reaction when that first bar comes. And if they do, that gives me like sort of like the, the green light to go down that road. Whereas, you know, with Twitch, like 
some people are just lurking. They're not gonna they're not gonna comment on every song you drop, and you're kind of just like, am I playing for you right now, or am I just doing me? But if I do my if I do me, this might get really weird, and I don't want to lose viewers. You know, it's kind of a double edged sword. You got to kind of find that middle ground of like, I'm gonna do me, but I'm not gonna freak everybody out by doing like Weird Al's greatest hits, <laughs> which is something I would definitely do. So. Like a Dr. Demento, like, you know, thank you hour or something like that. Riddler was actually talking about that, how people go to a club to be around other people for drink specials, for radio promotion. But if they're listening to you on Twitch, they'll listen to you because it's you and they want to hear what you want to play. So that's a compliment if someone's in the room listening to you. It's just they're there for you, not for anything else. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that's hundred percent accurate, and um, I wonder if it's going to affect things because I love being like, "Hey, I'm I'm in this road. This is what I'm feeling right now." And the chat is kind of like, "Oh man, vibe." You know, people are throwing up the vibe emotes and stuff like that. I'm gonna find out tonight, I guess. But um, going back to the real world DJing, are people going to be back in that mindset of "You're here for me. Take my requests." you're not going to do these weird old school tracks that my parents liked, you know, <laughs> do, do you need to, you need to go on rap caviar and just download the top 10 and put them on repeat because that's right before this. I was really, I don't want to say fed up, just kind of aware of where the under 25 nightclub crowd was. And it was very Spotify, very TikTok based, very short attention span and very down tempo. Um, I love hip hop and rap. I, I started DJing in that realm. So, uh, and I'll, I'll quote Chris Rock here. Um, I love hip hop, but I hate rap. So <clears throat> hip hop is, as you know, is, is a whole world and rapping is just sort of this one lane, but this one lane has become so, man, I, I, I look for new music every day and I try to go places where, where younger artists kind of like maybe get you know, oh, I got I got this video on this website featuring me as a new artist. Cool. That's I'm the dude that's looking at that, and I'm just like, I kind of miss the days of an A and R rep telling a young artist, you need to go practice before you put something out, because now people are just like, oh, I have a microphone, I got a 1080p webcam, and I got a whole lot to say. I've got you know two million followers on TikTok and Instagram, so I'm famous. Here's my song. And it's just like, you did nothing to get to this point. Like, you just made the decision. Like, some guys and girls spend their whole life just trying to get to that point. And it's a double-edged sword of um, contemporary music right now. Like, the the availability and the uh, ability for people to just step in front of a camera like this is just like that. So, no, no more gatekeepers, so. Well, speaking about gatekeepers and streaming and music, I must compliment you on that amazing T-shirt you're wearing. Oh, uh, and and you as well. <laughs> Thank this you. This is Harris Heller's. Um, the T-shirt does not say hentai, but Harris Heller's one I watch and I learn a lot from. What's the thing you've learned from Harris Heller that's ho- helped you the most? Um, man, it, it, honestly, we could do a whole stream dedicated to what I've taken out of him. At times, I felt like I am biting his style and his his tutelage too hard. Like, if you watch my gaming stream, when I go to my away screen, it was actually, initially, it was almost exactly like his away screen. And I'm like, dude, it's not my style to take somebody else's style. It is my style to take somebody else's style and then put my twist on it. So, and I feel like, at the same time, when you put yourself in a situation like he is in, he is talking to hundreds of thousands, if not of millions of young people who want to stream and giving them this beautiful product that they can strive for. Um, and now, but at the same time, the, the, the problem with that is now you have a, a million clones, you know, a million people all shooting, you know, with, with a Sony camera, with a nice, you know, 2.5 depth of field uh, lens and you know they've got backlighting like he always you know talks about and stuff like that um, I feel like when I watch him the thing I take away from the most is obviously tech reviews when he talks about tech 
Um, because that's just numbers. That's just a guy spitting out the numbers that he knows that I'm a numbers person. So when he's like, this does this many frames per second and it allows, you know, a clean feed out, um, I hear that as data. But what he puts out what I like the most is probably the mistakes he's made. Because as somebody who's older, I feel like I might not be able to teach you how to do something, but I can tell you what not to do because I did it and it didn't work. So when he's like, here's things that didn't work for me, um, those are the things I, I put in the back of my head, like, okay, don't do that. He just did one, like the, the top five things I wasted money on, you know, like, and I'm like, that's what I want to know because I am really, really good at wasting money. Um, so when he's like, oh, don't buy this or I bought this and, you know, I'm like, okay, all right, perfect example. You can't see it on camera, but I've got uh, audio foam all over the place. And luckily when he said audio foam, I'm like, oh shit, I, I did it. I'm going to, he's going to talk about exactly what I just did. And it, it was actually the opposite. I actually did this, what he ended up coming around to, but it's kind of funny. Like, I feel like, uh, and I've mentioned this on, on some of my just chattings. Um, no one should double down on one person in particular. Um, if I was to say to you, Hey, listen, I'm going to give you the highlight reel of one basketball player and tomorrow you're going to hit the court, your skill set would probably be limited to what you saw in that one video of that one player. But if I said to you like, Hey, I'm going to send you a clip of Michael Jordan, a clip of Isaiah Thomas, a clip of Larry Bird, a clip of magic, a clip of Akeem Elijah one. And I want you to take a little bit from each and develop your game. Your final product would not look like any of those particular players. It would be like, I, and I do the same thing. I take a little bit of like what Gail Level does. I take a little bit of what Nutty does. I take a little bit of what Apos Fox does. I take a little bit of what Harris does. And I feel like they all bring a different thing to the table. Like Harris really has a very clean, very polished, very straightforward, professional, like the alpha gaming thing. The whole thing is just very polished. And that's super admirable. And that's what I take from him. Or when I watch somebody like Nutty or like Andy Lippy, what they bring to the table is the tech side usually rolled into a very like jovial, fun delivery. So like when I watch one of those guys, I'm not just like, okay, this guy's just spitting data. This guy's spitting data and they're they're legit funny and they're legit somebody that I could if I if the world wasn't what it was, I'd be like, dude, we should go get some drinks. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're those kind of guys that come across the screen. So when I look at them, I'm like, okay, this, this guy's having success in this lane because of X, Y, Z. And this guy's having success from ABC. I'm just going to take a little bit of A and a little bit of Y, and I'm going to kind of put my spin on it. These so, things are available to everybody. So when people are like, how do you do that? I'm like, guys, spend 10 minutes on YouTube. You know, like I'm not, I'm not creating any of this stuff. It's just kind of out there in the ether. <laughs> One thing I pride myself on is I learn from the mistakes of others, and it's a mesh, mishmash of skills, like a mashup of what I learn from other people. I want to know what skills you've learned since you've been Twitch streaming. Ah, uh, man. The, so we'll, we'll work backwards. The latest thing that I've delved down, and it's via Nutty and Andy Lippy and um, Discord, the Leon's Board Discord, is this program called Leon's Board which is on its surface at first glance, a virtual stream deck. The difference is, is once you get into these buttons, they go layers and layers and layers and layers deep from what you can command. And that particular app allows you to um, gather data in, in the way that no other app can. Like there's things like on the stream deck that you can tell it like, oh, when somebody does this, do that, which is great. But Leorn's board, like it's it's it is difficult. It is another language. Um, you can say like, okay, when somebody comes in my chat for the first time and they post their first message, you're going to grab their picture. You're going to grab their name. You're going to compose a welcome message. You're going to put it on the screen for seven seconds, and then you're going to take it off. Then you're going to share a shout out link in the thing, and that's all automated. Once it's set up, you don't have to do anything. It'll happen every time somebody comes in. I started really simple with mine. Mine are like, I have this thing called Make Me Famous, 
basically it's a channel point redemption. Somebody clicks on it, they type in a message. I have it grab their picture. It pops up their picture, it puts up their name. I put like a rainbow effect on it. And then it pulls up whatever message they put in the channel redemption, it puts that up. It gives like DJs an opportunity to be like, hey, you know, make sure you follow me or, you know, whatever they want to say. They never say that. They always say something stupid and fun. And that's kind of why I, I want it. You know what I mean? It's the more I can get the chat immersed into what's happening. That's why I build so many of those like channel commands and, and command points and channel points and commands um, is because I want my chat to feel like they're part of it. And I feel like that's really, really big in, in the, in the pursuit of success. Um, but if you want to go back to day one, I built my first PC uh, in July and I've had as most DJs, nothing but MacBook pros since 2005. So, you know, I had a, well, I did buy a Dell, so we, we can just ignore that. Um, but after the Dell, I moved, you know, to a MacBook Pro, MacBook Pro, MacBook Pro. I've had like five MacBook Pros in my house. And then trying to stream on the Mac and trying to accomplish what I'm trying to accomplish, it wasn't happening. And everything I saw, everything I read, every single guru was like, you need to have a PC and here's why. And it wasn't, you know, the funny thing is the argument in the DJ community is like, hey, my PC is screwing up. Get a Mac. Why? It just works. Okay. You know, sure. I'll, I'll fall in line and get a Mac like everybody else. On the PC side, when you're like, I can't stream on my Mac, they don't say get a PC. It just works. They give you the reasons like, hey, your Mac is limited to 16 or 32 gigabytes of RAM. Your Mac is limited to... Uh, a four meg, a four gigabyte video card without an NVENC encoder. Like you'd only have two USB ports or you have one USB-C port and you're trying to do all this stuff. That's why you need a PC. So it makes sense. So I built this beast over here, you know, tried to keep it modest. I didn't go with like a thread ripper and anything crazy, but you know, it was, it was just over like 1200 bucks and you know, I got, uh, an NVIDIA 2070 Ti Super and uh, a Aorus B550 card, which are without being crazy are, are, you know, pretty reputable things, but they're already, you know, old news. The, the new video cards are, have, are kind of coming out at the moment and Ryzen uh, AMD just announced the Zen card. So like the stuff in my computer, even though I built it in July is already out of date. So it's going to be the hardest thing for me having a PC now, not being like, I want the new stuff. Like it's, it's a good thing. I don't have money. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Josh, this is amazing, but I'm getting way too excited. Let's pause here and continue next week. Is that cool? <sighs> These people are going to be slobbering for more of me, but I guess we can do that. So we'll see you next week. Okay. <laughs>